All right, so we made some UDTs, right? So we, we built our UDTs, and what I did real quick is I made some simple logic to show you how to turn on the order of operation. And what I wanna do is explain this in a short video so that we don't actually have to have a lot of programming uh, because again, when it comes down to it, um, it gets very verse, uh, diverse when it comes to like, or is this video about X, Y, or Z? This is about the order of operation, okay? So first, what we want to make sure there's zero faults. If there, we're monitoring the actual servo itself, the servo's name. Again, this is my servo's name is is going to be a trainer servo, and this is again using Studio 5000 version 32. Um, this is all this logic and the theory of operation is good for uh, RS Logic 5000 or Studio 5000. So keep that in mind. Uh, now. Again, so we're in the, the very first instance, we're monitoring our, our faults, right? So we're saying, okay, is the servo fault, faulted out? Then we're summing this up in rung one, we're summing it up saying, okay, there's no faults. There's no group faults. So what we're saying here is the motion group itself, there's no group faults. So, and why am I doing that? The reason I'm doing that is because of the simple fact of, well, if you had more than one servo, or if you had like, you know, multiple, like four, you know, in any more than just one, really. I've seen systems with, you know, up to 20 or 30 servos in their servo list. Now, when it comes down to it, you monitor the group because if the group is not happy, then you don't want to command it to do anything, right? You don't want to start controlling it um, if there's a problem. So that's why we monitor the group, okay? So the group has to be synced and uh, or you'll get a sync fault right so there's a group fault you can also monitor to make sure that the group is synced meaning you can come over here and have another bit that says a group sync so you could say uh, group sync and then I'm going to alias this bit again to my servo and then come over here and I'm going to look for group sync so we'll just type in uh, group or we can look at group sync. I think we could look at the motion group itself. So uh, this is called motion. So motion uh, over here, group. And then we'll say this is the group synced. So we wanna make sure our group is synced too. That, that will give you a good indication of can you do something or can't, you know, should you, right? So first we wanna make sure it's not faulted. Then we'll make, make sure it is synced. And then we wanna make sure there's no physical fault. And then we'll make sure there's no module fault for the controller. In my instance, it's a K6K controller. Your instance, it could be a SIP motion, right? Um, it depends, right? That's just what I currently have at the current time. There's no configuration fault, right? So the configuration that we put in and we, we did for the servo of the original setup, there's no configuration faults. Then we can say our status is okay. Now, if our status is not okay, I'm just simply, simply saying um, I'm moving a, a finite state machine, basically uh, a real simple scenario. I can actually make this fault out real quick and uh, we'll unscrew uh, one of these, uh, the encoder for the actual motor itself. Okay, I'll unscrew that and you can see that fault happened, right? So I have a physical fault, I have an access fault, so I protected myself right here with what I'm doing. And I also, with that fault bit, come over here and I moved my status control, my servo control state machine, right? Which is a finite state machine. It's a, just an X number of uh, events that can happen for a machine to do a said number of things, right? Um, what we're doing is we're, we're making sure we're controlling that properly. Okay, so even though I plug it back in, let me just plug it back in real quick. I'll just screw it back in and you can see. So I'm kind of give you an instance of that. That doesn't mean it's going to immediately reset itself. That's why I have this bit down here. So I'm having this next rung, which is rung three. I'm saying if the start button is pressed and the state isn't equal to zero, the current state is equal to that state and there's no shutdown then it's not if it's a shutdown then it's going to come over here and reset the shutdown if there's no shutdown and there's a fault it's going to do a fault reset if there's the, then if 
as soon as the fault is reset, it's going to go in and then come over to the next rung and then turn it off. Now if it's already off, it's going to then turn the servo on. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. Okay. So this came in. It's it started the or it reset the fault and it came in and turned the servo on. Now the how am I how do I know if the servo is on or off, right? I'm using the the trainer servo, which is the name of the servo that I have. I'm using that tag and I'm using the servo action status. So if I pull this up just a little bit you can see the servo action status is the tag I'm using. Now, how do I know again that that works? Again, uh, well, let's just do a shutdown real, uh, real quick. I'll do a shutdown so we can simulate that. So we'll do a shutdown. And I had the start bit already there. So let's reset our states because we don't have nothing in there to reset our states right now. Real simple logic. Again, I'm just trying to give you the base understanding so we'll do a shutdown it is shut down okay so currently we, we do have it shut down now if I do actually hit the start button it's gonna go being the zero is equal to the state right the states are equal to and the shutdowns on the it's gonna reset the shutdown state okay so you've seen it reset the shutdown and then it it turned the actual servo on you see it turn the servo on down here now I can have this loop back to zero and just keep repeating itself and turning itself off and on but again I'm not doing anything besides that now I can add some logic down here to actually run the servo so I can say okay well let's copy this control C control V okay let's go to state 3 right if it's equal to state 3 and the servos on then we can do a move right so let's come over here and let's add uh, a move in here uh, let's just do a jog let's come over here and do a jog we'll do motion move and we'll just do a jog command and let's pick our servo our trainer servo let's pick our motion control from our UDT right that we already made we're just going to come over here and do our first one now direction if you want to know the information about this instruction you can just go to instruction help and it will show you all the information about this so again direction we're just going to look at right here it's going to forward is zero real simple real easy um, but again if you want to know the information from that just go over there and right click that and then open that up and if it doesn't pop up on studio 5000 then enable chrome as your default user or default browser so anyway, we're going to come over here and put zero. We're going to put a speed of five. We're going to put the speed units as units per second. Uh, the acceleration rate, we're going to do a trapezoid. So we'll just say 1000 is fine for now. Um, and I know there's a lot of questions on, you know, units per second and all that's based upon your, how your servo is set up. Just know that. So we're just going to go right here. We'll do units per second again. Well, profile there's two profiles your trapezoid and s curve you can have a trapezoid which is a very sharp turn or a very sharp curve from the point that it's not running to point that it is running uh, a s curve is going to be a like a real fine uh, depending upon your parameters you have put in there uh, it could be a small little slope into the actual speed we're going to do a trapezoid uh, a jerk we're just going to do a 10 uh, jerk is going to be 10 of that and then we'll say the jerk units are going to be units per second again we're not going to merge so we'll put zero zero for merge speed lock position zero and a lock direction we're going to run this for a set period of time okay so we're going to make sure we come over here and let's do our IP and let's do this bit our, we're going to grab our motion instruction type right and we're going to grab our IP bit and as long as it's running it's in process what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and do a timer and we'll say 
uh, axis running. Okay, and then we'll let it run for 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay. And then at, after 10 seconds, what we wanna do is we'll click down here and add another branch, okay. And after 10 seconds, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our next state. So our next state is going to be stopping it. So we'll just say, as soon as that's done, we're gonna come over here, control C, control V again, copy that. We're gonna to go to state four. We don't have any states in there, so let's add state four in there. And then we'll add another rump, okay? And then basically copy this, control C, control V. And if in state four, then we want to make sure that we turn the actual jog off. So what we want to do is we want to come into motion uh, state or motion move. We want to come over here to the stop, the MAS. Okay, we're going to come over here and get our axis, which is our, in my instance, is the trainer servo. We're going to get our tag name, which is our axis one. And we're going to get stop or motion axis stop, use the very first one, stop type, we're gonna do all. We could just do jog, but we're gonna do all. Acceleration, uh, we'll put yes, and we'll accelerate at 10,000 or, or at 1,000. The units is units per second. Jerk, uh, we're not gonna change the jerk, uh, but we'll, we will put a value in there because it requires a value, and then we'll stop it. And then what we can do to transition to the, you know, let's just say another state for that instance, uh, we can say, okay, well, is the motion, is it actually running? Okay, so for this instance, we're gonna do something slightly different. Um, and, and again, so for this to move into another state, okay, this is going to, let's just feed back to state zero for this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it and then turn it off, run it, turn it off, run it, turn it off. Really simple. But I wanna verify that the servo is turned off. So let's come over here and, and monitor one of these. Let's go to our axis, monitor tags. And let's pick one of them that would be like uh, the velocity running. So we come down here to the very bottom. I believe it's actual velocity right here. We can get actual velocity, copy this, and I'm just giving you a for instance. You don't have to use this. I'm giving you an example. This All this is an, is an example so you understand the way a servo works, okay? And we'll say if the actual velocity is less than, or let's just say less than point uh, one right because it's never going to be perfect because if I just slightly try to turn it it's going to try to adjust itself all the time anyway as long as it's on as long as it is it is on so at that point we'll do that all right so at this point uh, we'll have this turn off and let's actually have it off for a set amount of time too so let's say that it was off. So let's add another bit in here. And let's say that the motion was off or the, the actual axis was off. And we'll say that, that it was done, right? Or actually, yeah, let's just say it was done. Or we can say the motion is off from this down here. Let's do that, I think that's better. Come over here. And let's use a timer again. And we'll say this is the axis rest time. All right. And then let's put 10 seconds in there. Actually, I need to make this tag. Actually, the tag is made. Let's put some time in here and let's say 10 seconds. And we'll transition back to, to zero after that's done. Very simple. Okay, so we'll transition back to zero, or state zero, once this is done. All right, so real quick, 
the servo is actually running because we had the start bit on let's actually let it go through the process of 10 seconds then it goes into the next one this is timing out okay it's not running the servo is not running and then as soon as it's not running it would go to state zero now let's do ourselves a favor again and let's do a motion shutdown and again you could have uh, motion shutdowns for many different reasons so let's do a shutdown and let's do a start okay so it comes in it starts this process and the motor is running we can verify that from the actual uh, parameter or from the actual motor to actually look at the velocity we can do a no operation so that we can do that uh, we'll do MNOP and then we'll say this is a compare or let's do a move and we'll just look at the trainer servo and we'll look at the actual velocity or the actual position the actual position velocity this is actual so what I'm going to do here is just show you that the, the actual position is running. This is guard. I believe once we're in the guard, it's not good. So I think we're past it. All right. So let's get into the. And we can just go ahead and find it. Um, maybe easier to find it in the servo right here. And we'll say the position. That's what I was looking for. Sorry about that. It took so long. All right. So just to show you that it is running, uh, that's a new operation. And we're also just for safe bets, we're just going to say that this is an AFI. So it's not run anywhere. It's just giving you a rough indication of this is running. And then while it's doing that, let me put while it's in run state let me go ahead and pull the actual um, make a fault happen we'll pull the encoder again okay so we'll make sure we pull the encoder we have a fault it's at zero right so we have a fault we do have a fault we're gonna come back in and our start button is on so let's turn our start start button off Naturally, you would have controls for this, like a start button or uh, like an HMI button or something of that nature. This thing does not want to plug back in. Sorry about that. The, the little thing did not, uh, the plug didn't want to screw back in. Alright, so uh, let's actually come over here and now you can see that there is a fault. There's a fault on our summing bit, our summing rung up here. Right? So what we want to do is hit start. Hit start. Let it reset the fault. Let it come down here and now the servo's back running. So that's the proper sequence and the proper order of operation to make sure that you have a healthy servo system, right? So make sure there's no faults. Make sure you shut the servo off if it is on and then command it to do whatever you need it to do, right? Now I'm just showing you this as a base implementation. This is nothing written in stone. This is just my best practice and something I've done for years. And uh, it's always a, a real reliable system because again, you're, you're verifying you don't have any faults. You're verifying that there's no sh shutdown reset. You're making sure your whole system is basically healthy then you're turning your servo off, meaning you're completely turning your controller off. Then you're coming in, turning your, your controller on to control the servo position, and then you're moving it. I'll, I gave you a simple illustration of how to move it. Again, this is just, again, a really, 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 really simple il illustration. Nothing written in stone, this is just an example. So please take it for what it is worth. It does give you the proper order of operation and uh, also shows you how to use that UDT that we actually made and you know different ways to actually go about implementing that. 
So hopefully that was very helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one.